You can attach a soil moisture probe to our ST160 valve station or one of our ST100 wind machine stations. We use a Centec or EnviroPro probe, which give you instant readings. Uh, and they have a sensor every four inches. Uh, so this is about 18 inches long, uh, contains four sensors. And each sensor measures an area about the size of a basketball. So you're getting a really clear indication of what your soil moisture is at each stage. And these are real young plants, so you can get away with using a shorter probe. Um, if you know you have a larger tree or if you have vines, you might want to go with a longer probe. So next steps, I'm going to show you how to, you know, put the auger together, uh, drill a hole, make a slurry, and then finally plant your probe for use. All right, before you start your installation, you're going to want to make sure you have your auger. Um, you're going to need a trowel and a bucket for mixing a slurry. Um, you'll also want a jug of water, probably a big jug of water. Um, make sure you have your probe. And then if you're going off of an ST100 uh, or you don't have a pressure sensor, um, you're going to want to get a T that will connect to your irrigation line. Um, as well as a pressure switch. Um, these are offered by Alltrack, you know, and basically you put that on your irrigation line and then uh, with some tape, you know, you just attach your switch so you know when your irrigation line is on. Now to attach the auger together. All right, so here's your auger. Um, this auger has multiple parts to it, but it's pretty straightforward. You have your handle. Um, you have the actual drill bit itself. Um, and then you have your uh, actual drive line of the, of the auger and all just screws together. And we're not going that deep. There's a extra extension here. Um, we don't really need that. So I'll just put together the basic, basic auger here. All right, so that's your auger. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find a representative plant uh, somewhere in your field. We're just doing this right by the valves. Uh, you can run that cable for I think 500 feet is the max length, uh, which is not very practical. Um, normally what guys do is they'll trench, you know, one or two, you know, maybe a row over um, and then pick a plant that's, you know, not in a super deep spot where water might pool, just something real average. Um, and then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find a spot on the southwest of that plant. And you go on the southwest um, if you're in the northern hemisphere because that gets the uh, most exposure. Um, so that's south right there. So we can pick a spot here. Um, normally, normally if this was a larger plant, you'd go kind of at the, the edge of your root zone. Um, so you'd want to pick a spot southwest side, kind of on the edge of my root zone. I'm going to go real close to uh, where the dripper emits because then you're going to be able to see, um, you know, what that dripper's doing. If you're irrigating long enough to saturate the area around it, but you're not irrigating too long to where that water is just going to drop straight through uh, into your water table. Um, and then I'm doing this by hand. You can also get a uh, like an electric uh, drill and just put this on there as well. Um, if you're doing real deep holes, that's probably the way to go or if you're going through real uh, difficult soil. Uh, this is sand and we're only going down to 18 inches so it's not that big a deal. So I'm just going to auger down until I get to about 18.
tap that out and clear that out. I'm just gonna see if that's long enough here. So that's about right uh, for my probe. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some dirt. And what you're looking to do is you need to make a slurry uh, for the hole. So the slurry will, you know, you don't want any air gaps around the probe. Um, you don't want anywhere where water can pool around the probe. Um, when you're getting dirt to make your slurry, you wanna make sure that there's not a lot of plant matter in it because that plant matter will decompose over time and create a gap. Um, you also wanna make sure there's not rocks in it. Um, they're just kind of a pain when they get in the hole and they'll keep the probe from fully seeding into the hole. Um, so I'm just gonna come over here and scrape some, scrape some topsoil. Make sure I'm not getting any plant matter, looking for rocks, getting those out of there. What you can do is you can mix up a bucket of this beforehand if you're doing a lot of these probes. Um, and that really helps this go fast because you know one person drills the hole, the other one drops the slurry in and pushes the probe down in there. Um, and you always need more than you think. <laughs> so when you put, pour it in, you want it to basically fill up the entire hole um, with slurry. All right, so I got a good amount here. And I'm gonna add water until this becomes almost like a pancake batter mixture. Um, just don't wanna to add too much water, otherwise you'll have to add a lot more dirt. So I'm just mixing this here. A little too thick, that consistency. That's still a little too thick. Let's just do a little bit more water. A little bit goes a long way. All right, so we got our hole. Um, you know, just make sure that there's, again, no plant matter that might fall in when you're doing this. Um, got my slurry that looks like pancake mixture. And so I am just gonna fill this hole up right up about to the top doesn't matter if you go over i'm going to take my probe um, this is just a demonstration so i haven't trenched anything but um, this is the connector that connects with the station and then you can extend this wire um, you can purchase extensions from all track or uh, you can make one yourself uh, so you put the slurry in you put your probe in and you just want to push that probe all the way down into the dirt. Just like that. And you wanna to try to get a little bit, you actually wanna go about an inch and a, and a quarter under the top. So that's good. Um, you can pull away this extra. You'll notice that a lot of, you know, most of that didn't come out of there, um, which is fine. And then just to keep it from cracking, you might want to put some dirt over the top. Um, you know, if you get a crack in that slurry, then water can drain in there and you might get an erroneous reading. So we got the probe in the ground. Um, we'd run our wire to our device and we'll instantly start getting readings. All right, so now we have our probe in the ground. Um, you know, if this was a permanent installation, you'd probably trench some conduit. Um, this would come up in something very similar to this, which would be a flex conduit. 
And then here is our uh, accessory port. And this accessory port is designed for soil moisture sensors and other sensors. Uh, there's a black cap on it. You remove the black cap like this. And then you just click in the soil moisture probe sensor. Uh, and that'll start taking readings. You'll see it pop up in your app. Now that the installation's done, we've hopped into the Alltrack app and we're actually looking at a, a month view of a soil moisture probe. That red line is the soil moisture readings. It's an average of all the different sensors in that probe. And then that yellow line is your minimum threshold. So that's the driest you want your uh, soil to get. And then the blue line is the uh, saturation point. So that's the wettest that you want that soil to get. And you'll see here that they did a uh, large run. That big uh, gray bar is actually uh, the pressure switch. So when the irrigation is on, you see a gray bar there. And this is a really long event. We can zoom in and see that that's actually a 24 hour event. So in California, sometimes they do that to push salts out of the soil. And what you'll see here is if we expand it with that little plus button there, um, we'll see all the different readings from the probes. So um, you can see five inches that actually started to go up first before some of the deeper probes, um, which makes sense because it's closer to the surface and closer to the drip. Uh, we can also turn some of those off. And when we turn these off, that's helpful because when you're irrigating um, during the year, one important thing is that you don't want to be irrigating too long to where water is just dropping straight through past your root zone um, into the ground. And so if we look at our lowest sensor, that's at 33 inches, we can see that that sensor actually jumped up there. And what that means is that they put on enough water that that water actually went down below the root zone and was lost. So in this case, because they're flushing salts, uh, that's the point. But if you saw this uh, during an actual irrigation event, you know that, that you're wasting water and uh, wasting money. You can also check t soil temperature, um, which can be important in places like you know, Washington, uh, where the ground actually freezes. Um, in addition to this, you can set some alerts. So you can set rules for a low soil moisture content. Um, so that could alert your crew when a certain area needs to be irrigated, if it's too high. So this probe actually gets instant readings. And so while you're irrigating, you can know if you've over irrigated. Um, and then we also do temperature alerts. Then the last thing we do is we do soil moisture run reports. So you can come here under settings uh, and you can set up run reports. A run report is an email report that gets sent to you on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis and summarizes the performance um, of your soil moisture sensors and will tell you if you've over irrigated, uh, under irrigated, and give you some uh, helpful stats. So we've shown you how to install the probe and check the software. Now if you've put your probe in and you're getting faulty readings, uh, maybe you just want to move it sometime during the season, you can do that. Uh, we recommend an extraction tool like this. You can use channel locks. Uh, you just want to be really careful that you don't put too much pressure on the probe itself. Um, you're gonna to wanna to use some cardboard or something to kind of soften those channel locks so you don't damage the probe. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig out around it just a little bit, kind of minding the wire here. I'm gonna dig around this probe. Again, the wire is the important part not to, not to damage. If you damage that, you render the probe pretty much useless. So the hole's dug, uh, I have my extraction tool here, thumb screws out, then I put this guy around the probe, and I'm just going to tighten that thumb screw again. And you just want it 
tight enough to really grip that that probe and then when you pull it up what you want to make sure you're doing is you want to make sure that you're twisting as you're pulling uh, you don't want to pull straight up because what you'll do is again you'll uh, hit that wire and you could damage that wire so just making sure that's tight and then as I twist you can see it's pulling free there you go you've extracted your probe uh, you're gonna want to fill this hole back up with uh, soil and uh, if you come across a hole that you haven't used in a while don't use it again um, you know you could have some contaminants in there uh, it's really hard to make sure there's no air pockets especially if you know a mold's been digging around in there or something um, so that's how you remove your probe and please let us know if you have any questions on this process you can reach out to us at support at alltrack.io or give us a call